Is this thing on? I got my tea. I'm ready to work. What's up, guys? Uh, this is Jose. Uh, we are not at the gazebo, as you can see, but uh, I was told that the gazebo is wherever we go. So we are live from the great state of New Jersey. I, I guess I'm a photographer. I don't really know. Um, it's more specifically uh, street photography. I don't really like, you know, giving it a, a label or anything, but um, I like capturing people. Uh, I like capturing moments. Uh, you know, when you talk about street photography and like what it is, I, I think it's one of the truest uh, forms of art that there is because you're capturing moments that are never going to happen again um and that's the fun part you know you're, you're you're capturing literally once in a lifetime moments that really don't happen ever again and that's what i think makes photo those types of photos so genuine um so yeah um aside from that uh i'm a pretty normal guy uh i i have a career in marketing as well and uh i do this because I love it, you know, nothing to do with money or anything of the sort. Uh, this is just what I've always enjoyed doing, so. First time I picked up a camera, damn, that's a crazy question. Um, it had to have been when me and my friends uh, were skateboarding back in the day, man. I feel like that's a story of a lot of people of how they got into like taking photos or taking videos. It's because you and your friends were like out skating. Um, yeah, skateboarding definitely has held like a huge, you know, place in my heart because it's definitely what I think one of like the most influential sports that there is, um, even though it isn't exactly like a real sport, quote unquote, with a with a team. I think it is now, and now it's in the Olympics as well, which is pretty cool. Um, but it's not your traditional sport, uh, I, I guess you could say. Um, but yeah, man, that's that, that's how I I picked up a Sony A two ninety, probably two thousand and like nine, when I was like thirteen, twelve, and I uh, would just it didn't even have video, man. It was such an old school camera, and I got it for Christmas. I was so hyped, and I would just take photos of me and my friends out skating. And eventually, um, I got to high school, and I completely stopped um got into sports um you know things that high school kids do um went away to college um in the great state of pennsylvania and um also didn't touch photography at all i was so involved on campus and clubs and fraternities and things like that and um you know so i was not basically took about like an eight-year break from the craft and uh when i graduated and I started, uh, you know, my career, I realized that, you know, I'm not in school anymore and I'm just waking up and going to work. And um, that really sucked, you know, like not not having the social life and, you know, I had a good job and I was happy, but it was I was missing something. You know, I couldn't just wake up and go to work and come home like I, I needed something else. So I took one of my first checks that I got, man, for my job and I I bought a brand new camera and it's it's been history ever since um it's in the few years that it's been it's given me more than i ever would have expected to get to gain out of it um it's it's been an amazing ride so far um to do something that you actually enjoy man i feel like a lot of people don't get that so you know i i, I definitely cherish it um for sure so you know me being bored at, at a job in finance um, is what led me to where we are right now. So, I mean, so like when you think of New York and anything photography related, specifically street, I mean, it's it's a cheat code, you know, it's 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 literally a cheat code. Um, you can make a lot of things look good in the city. But at the same time, it could also be like overwhelming at the, you know, at once. All, all, there's a lot of things happening, a lot of things around you. Um, so I think that it's what what first of all, what got me into is that it's free. You know, like you don't you don't have to walk and beg for a job at, at a studio uh, to do street photography. Anyone can do it. You know, it's open to anyone. You could literally go outside with a camera and just go take photos of people, things that you like. And 
I think that that's awesome because, you know, not like I said, not everybody has access to a studio and then to models and to gigs with brands and, you know, the, the product photography. Not everybody has lights. You can take any camera, any lens, and you can go shoot in the street and you could take amazing photos. And I think that there's beauty behind that. So that's what got me into it. Um, you know, when I when I graduated college and I, I lived in Philly for a year, I got transferred um, back to the New York office and I worked in Manhattan and I hated my job, for lack of a better term. I hated it. And um, one of the ways that I would cope with, you know, doing something that I didn't like every single day was I would carry my camera on my commute every single day to and from work. It was about like an hour commute and um, I would take hundreds of photos on my walk to work and those are some of the photos that you know you see now um that people you know always ask me about and where i was and most of those photos that you see of me in new york are during my commute i would uh sometimes leave my house earlier so i can just walk another block to the left or to the right you know a little more west um, um in midtown so yeah that's really what got me into you know, that entire aspect. Um, so, yeah. So I'm glad to say that I have absolutely uh, no process at all. Um, and when you talk about gear, I think that people, you know, like that get into photography or some people that are even years into it are so focused on gear and you realize that it really doesn't matter. It's cliche, you know, use what the best camera you have is the one, the best camera to use is the one that you have is what everybody says. But it really is true. Um, for me, um, I have, I shoot Sony. I have an A7 III, which granted is re relatively a pretty expensive body, but um, any photo that you've ever seen me take, uh, it's two lenses. Uh, it's a Tamron zoom lens and it is the Sony Nifty 50, which is one of their cheapest lens. Um, and those are the only lenses that I ever use, I ever carry. Um, I'd like to get other lenses, but uh, obviously, if you know anything about Sony, they have literally the most expensive lenses in the world. Um, so, but for now, man, like everything that I've taken from, you know, lookbooks, editorials, uh, you know, things that have been on billboards, like those have all been on, you know, pretty affordable gear. Um so, uh, you know, I don't really focus on those type of things. And when it comes to my editing process, uh, I never go in with a goal. I never go in with a color set. Uh, I feel like a lot of people uh, worry so much about like how like their Instagram layout looks and and to each his own, man, like art is art, you know, whatever, like that's what you're into. But for me, like, I just don't think that that's like the real photography aspect of it like you know you shouldn't really be worrying about what your instagram layout looks like you know your 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 aesthetic right exactly man instagram could die tomorrow and what are we left with oh you know so i edit my photos uh every single photo is different um you know some people like being recognized for a certain look and you know that's awesome but for me i look at a photo and i think that it could look way different than the same photo that I took yesterday. So that's just me, man. Yeah, I think like one of the coolest things that's even came out of this was um, last year when I got the uh, Juneteenth uh, feature in the NASDAQ billboard in Times Square. Um, shout out to B from NASDAQ. She knows who she is for that great opportunity. Uh, you know, they kind of just they kind of asked and reached out about it and um we did it and they put up like 10 of my photos like on a bill like that's that's a dream come true man like to like any photographer like who wouldn't want the literally like the biggest billboard where the most people see in the world um to showcase your photos and that was really cool they had my name up there you know yeah so that's but right now um this project that i'm working on to date i think is gonna hopefully I'm, I'm hoping it's gonna be the most impactful thing that i've ever done um the project is called uh meet dixon and uh dixon is a uh haitian dominican that i met 
um, while I was in Dominican Republic for a couple weeks. Um, he's 20 years old and he's gone through more things than, you know, people our age and younger couldn't even imagine. Um, and the goal is to introduce him to the world, uh, introduce his story and uh, showcase some of my photos from that trip and um, anything, any print that sells from that project will go 100% directly to him. Um, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Um, I'm going to be showing proof as well because you know how the internet gets. <laughs> but um, yeah, man, everything will be going directly to him. Uh, I'm super excited about it. He's an amazing person. And um, you know, that all came about because, you know, growing up, I spent all of my summers up until I was about like 14 in Dominican Republic. Um, my mom, you know, God bless her soul, single parent. Um, she needed a well-deserved break from me every summer growing up. So from the day that school would end, the next day I was on a flight to DR and I would come back the day before school started. Every single summer. You could ask my friends about this. They didn't see me the whole summer growing up, ever. Like, my friends did not see me. And, um, dude, I honestly, uh, as I got older, I started to kind of not 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 like it, but it was just kind of annoying because as you get older, you get more friends and you want to spend more time with your friends in the summer. But, right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, so, so my mom, yeah, my mom's shipping me off to, the, to another country every summer, yeah. Every summer. Every summer, dude. So she would ship me out there. And, um, you know, if, if for those that don't know, um, the, 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 the relationship between Dominicans and Haitians in the Dominican Republic is, is very um, interesting, to say the least. Um, Haitians are trying to escape, you know, a country that has basically, you know, much, much less resources uh, than the Dominican Republic. And... Um, you know, growing up, I saw that the way that these people were treated uh, coming over, and it was, it's, uh, it's, it's terrible, man. Uh, I remember my aunt, uh, who is an amazing person. Uh, I would watch her uh, hide these these, these Haitian uh, immigrants, you know, from the police, just picking people up like stray animals off the street. It's, uh, it was, it was truly uh, just disturbing, um, and I would see it every day, and I remember just like kind of being upset and being mad that like I couldn't do anything about it and um I think that's where you know this project was you know created uh from a long time of me seeing the way that these people were treated and um so yeah it's it was definitely a premeditated project no doubt um I went there with this intention to meet someone just like Dixon and there's so many stories just like his um, but I thought that this was this was a perfect time. You know, I'm at I'm at an age now where maybe I could, uh, you know, help someone um, directly uh, after seeing all of those, you know, situations and issues growing up. Um, and, you know, it's funny because like every single person from Dominican Republic, you know, every every Haitian Dominican that I've met and every Haitian in general out there are some of the most hardworking people that you will ever meet. I mean, these guys have 10 times the less resources that we have out here, and they will build this house in a week. It's, it's, and that's no cap. That's, that's serious. That's serious, man. And, um, yeah, and there are, they are some of just the, the most big hearted people, um, you know, I, I, I've seen them just be treated terribly and they still wake up and, you know, they're blessed, man. And, and I think that this project, um, the goal of it is to get people maybe talking a little bit, man, and maybe, maybe looking in the mirror a little bit. Um, you know, your issues really aren't that big, uh, in comparison. Uh, you know, I'm a firm believer in, you know, someone, and, you know, that's kind of how my mom raised me. You know, someone always has it worse than you. And, you know, um, a lot of people would trade their problems for yours. And that's just facts. And, uh, you know, I think one of the biggest things um, with social media and it, it could be so toxic because, you know, we people have always had more money than you. Right. But now you're able to see that every day. And, you know, you you see the Kylie's and the Travis Scott's and 
you know, the people with the with the cars and the girls and people don't work and they have, you know, and they make a million bucks off of OnlyFans, you know, shit like that. Like you see that that's 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 always been happening, you know, even back to, you know, the, the olden days where the Internet didn't exist. But now it's so in your face and people are so caught up in like comparing their lives to these celebrities. Well, how about you compare your life to someone like this in this project? You know what I'm saying? Put it a little more into perspective. Um, Because everybody's got problems, man. Everybody goes through, you know, some shit. And so, like I said, man, that's kind of the goal for this is to maybe be an eye-opener to some people, you know. Um, Be grateful for the things that you have. Um, So, yeah. So, I compare the... It's a little worse out there just because of the poverty level, but I compare the Haitian versus Dominican relationship just how we compare, let's say, the South with Mexicans. Um, You know, these are people that are trying to come over here and better themselves. And if and and it's 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 real rich for for us to sit here and complain about it. But, you know, you're not the one over there. You know, you don't know what that's like. so that's just like how I think of it. Um, I hope that this project maybe could just make people put themselves in other people's shoes. Um, it's not ju- this project isn't just specifically um, a lesson about, you know, a 20 year old Haitian kid. But that 20 year old Haitian kid represents the 20 year old Mexican kid, you know, who is trying to come over to the United States and maybe get a better life. You know, that's that's kind of what it's about sort of an immigration story or, or and not even immigration just a, a between countries people borders that maybe we created that means so much more than just geography it, it really is a lifestyle difference it's an opportunity difference it's resources all of those things so it really speaks volumes to the quality of life in different places that just happen to be on the same island but geography says oh this is where we separate them and that just creates a whole different problem for people that could be on either side of the fence definitely dude like it's and like you just said man it's that that's a great point same island bro and like we're talking a division of just a chain they don't even have a border in in haiti if you didn't know that it's a chain link fence and in a lot of the places yeah it's and and don't get me wrong man i love being dominican um it's it's an amazing culture. It's 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 very impactful um, country and culture. Dominicans are very as as funny as you as they seem and out of pocket sometimes. It's it's a very um, you know Im- impactful uh, culture. And with that being said, uh, I just when you know when I go there, it's it's mind boggling the amount of hatred you see for 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 these people and. Um, it's maybe this project and it's it's almost more like a generational thing as well you know it's like anything else you know our parents are going to be um much more quote unquote ignorant to certain things and and you know i think that's something that people our age and younger are really trying to change and i think that's so dope man so but yeah By the time this comes out, the project will definitely be released. Um, and the goal of it was I didn't want to do too much writing on it. Um, it is somewhat a mixture of like interviewish because I am asking him questions in order to, you know, tell the story. Um, I hung out with him a lot, but I did have to kind of re-ask a lot of questions just so I could write them down and get the story, of course, you know, correct. And um the project is based around the photos themselves. Um, um, you could even not read the words. And uh, my goal is for you to see the photos and know what you're looking at. Um, and I think people will definitely be able to pick up on it once they see what I'm talking about. Um, they're, the photos themselves are not my usual work. Um, like we spoke about, my usual work is that street aspect. Uh, these are very, very intimate um, portraits of a young man uh, in a half-built home. And um, 
you'll you'll just see <laughs> and um i i don't want to give too much away man uh because I, I i really want i really want i don't want people to hear this and then go look you know you should get your own eye get your own thoughts go see it and uh you know come up with you know your own reasoning um about why i did some of the things on there um and as for the proceeds yeah man like i said um i'm going to be along with that i'm releasing two projects actually so meet dixon is one and the other is going to be called todo bien which means all good in spanish um the dixon photos will not be released um for sale um but the todo bien photos will all be mostly for sale and any of those proceeds um that gets sold anything anything um will go 100 percent directly to him so that's that's the goal, man. Uh, you know, I, I'm not over here moving mountains, but I could at least, you know, I would love to just help at least one person, you know, leave it better than than when we got there type situation. So. The project is definitely premeditated. Uh, it came from, you know, like we spoke about all those years and all those summers that I spent going to Dominican Republic, you know, and spending my youth there and, uh, you know, seeing the the lifestyle and, and meeting uh, the beautiful people of Haiti that have migrated into Dominican Republic. Um, and also, you know, the hardships that they go through and sometimes the way that they're treated um, and you know, this project, uh, it, it means a lot to me because, you know, I, I met this young man, you know, I'm, I'm 25 and, and, and the kid Dixon, he's, he's 20 and he's seen more shit than, you know, me and you and everybody else combined that we know, like, you know, we're talking real hardships. Um, and I think that people, need to see this project because I think it puts life into perspective. Um, you know, here in the U S and anybody that's, you know, you know, the average person that we know, we tend to complain a lot about, you know, things that in hindsight really don't matter in the grand scheme of things. And I'm not, um, downplaying people's problems and, you know, issues, but you know, when you read this story, I think you'll know what I mean. Um, it'll really put it into perspective uh, what people around the world uh, go through. And, you know, the goal of the project, there's a million goals for the project, to be honest. But another goal for the project is to, for people to read it and just kind of, you know, take a take a step back and, and, and be grateful, man. You know, social media, we're so used to seeing the Kylies and the, Travis Scott's and the whoever's man uh, and enjoying their their riches and their yachts but you know we've grown up in that and and when you think about it people have always had more money than you um, but now the difference is that it gets thrown in your face and it's 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 elevated and it's exposed and you see it every day people have more money than you man people have a better life than you and arguably money more money than you'll ever see and you know that's it, it's i get it it's gut-wrenching but we we've we've become obsessed with comparing ourselves so much to these celebrities and these you know people of of upper echelons that we forget how much we all have still um you know it, it's you know somebody always has it worse than you and you know living life being jealous and thinking you know why not me is just not the way that I think um, is is not even it's not healthy. Um, so maybe this maybe this can help. You know, maybe even just one person think for just a second, like damn, yeah, I, you know, it ain't so bad. You know, where I'm at, you know. So, yeah. Damn, moving forward with photography. So like I said, man, uh, photography is not my full-time job um, for now. I I love where I'm at and my relationship with photography because it's so natural, right? Like I, I'm not out fishing for shoots and trying to get there. Like, nah, man, like I, I do what I like and what I want to do. I, I pick and choose 
Um, I get to say no to some things because I have, you know, a, um, a career. And so I, the projects that I do do are literally just purely love and I want to work with certain people and, and I don't know if I want to ruin that, to be honest, you know, I don't know if I want to create this and make this into a job because it's the one thing that I have going for me that I just 100% enjoy. And it's, it's just, it's just love, man. So that's where I'm at for now. Um, it could change in the future, man. I mean, don't get me wrong. If, if, uh, if Gunna hits me up and wants to bring me on studio for some bread, I'm going, <laughs> you know, um, um, you know, shit like that. I will, don't get me wrong. You know, I, I do have a price for sure. But uh, for now, man, I'm just enjoying it, man. No future plans. Um, some of my goals definitely would is definitely to get published um, in a magazine. Um, that's one. And uh, two uh, would definitely be to do a sick album cover for an artist that I enjoy. Those are my two um, probably goals for now. I, it was to get on a billboard, but we checked that off the list. So that's pretty cool already. Okay, so I almost want to say, like, I wish, so, like, we talked about, like, my life and, like, the eight-year gap that I had of not even literally not picking up a camera. I kind of want to tell myself, that my younger self, to keep going. I've thought about this before. Like, what would have happened if I never put the camera down from when I picked it up when I was 13? Like, where would I be now? But I'm not one to think like that at all because it's funny because the day that I picked up a camera, you know, after that huge break, I was already... 20 times better than I was when I was 13 even though I was it was new technology it was I literally felt like a like an old person picking up technology because I didn't know how the cameras work now because I had taken such a long break but I I picked it up and like I had lived and I had matured so much that I already had a better eye if that makes sense so I don't even know if I regret that because who knows man it, it's it's where I'm at now and, and and I'm happy with 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 what I got going on so The number one is fuck Instagram, literally. Um, nobody cares about your feed. Um, that shit's corny. Uh, take photos of stuff that you like, not because other people are taking photos of it. Um, you know, photography is an interesting place because it's an interesting art form because it's, it's, it's not appreciated as much because it seems so easy. Um, every phone has great cameras now, you know, unlike art, you know, not everybody could draw, but anybody can take a picture. Can you take a good picture? That's a whole different situation, but anyone can take a picture. So the art of it's like a photography itself is like devalued in that aspect, but that's why you have to try to put your all into the photos that you take, because I truly believe that. When you look at a photo, you could tell if it was rushed. And I'm not talking about the framing or that it's blurred. I'm talking about the actual photo, the idea of it. You know, when I go out and I'm in the city and I'm, I have an idea for a photo in my mind and I'm trying to get it, I'm trying to get it. 99% of the time, I never get it. You know, these things happen naturally. And, and you could tell when someone is taking a good photo of something that they really enjoy, man, because it's, it's on point. And so that's my advice is take photos of what you enjoy. Um, forget the internet uh, and just, just, just do you straight up. I love Harrisburg, man. Um, I, I went to school out in Shippensburg and um, I met some of my best friends out there. I went out there literally knowing nobody. And there's those dudes were, will be at my wedding and shit probably in the future. So um, it's the connection with Harrisburg. It's, it's, I, I hold it close to my heart because I was interning there for the summer once uh, at Pepsi and I lived with my, my boy, Danny, shout out Danny. Uh, he went to CD East, right? That's something that's right. That's something. Yeah. I knew I got that right. Um, it's that like green, right? Green colors. No, that's CD. Okay. He went there then okay. central dolphin is. East is the Panthers, black and red. Okay, no, he was green. I know that. Okay, so that's where he went. I lived near there okay. for the summer. 
and he let me live in his house, dude. And, um, dude, we would go out, uh, second street, like Sawyer's and shit. Yeah, man. And so definitely, uh, the best wings I've ever had. Ted's my favorite, my favorite wings in the world. So beyond New York city, dude, dude, New York. dude. Okay. Look, look, I'm going to get a lot of hate for this. New Jersey and New York. We get a lot of love for good food. This is the best Italian food. Um, ever but um dude the wings here are not good new jersey new york i don't care what nobody says we do not have overall I'm, I'm there are some good wing spots but overall we do not specialize in wings pennsylvania bro that pa barbecue chip on the teds stop it get out of here um so yeah those that's like <laughs> that's, that's my fit that's my shit but yeah man um and to get deeper uh, into the Harrisburg thing, um, I uh, I've known Sprite Lee for for years. Um, yeah, from Paul Meyer, I believe. Yeah, yeah. So me uh, me and him are, are close. I've done a bunch of work for him. Um, shout out Sprite, dude. He is that kid is he's got some. He's different. Like he's he's literally built different. Um, Marpo, who has been on this pod, I I consider him the ASAP Yams of Harrisburg. The dude just knows everybody man the dude knows everybody and he's he connected me with you i i met you through him and like i've met so many people through marpo um i met kira i, I worked with kira love who is from harrisburg um and um dude shout out those dudes man like joe mcnew and uh, train you know they, they they do some amazing work those dudes that what they're doing out there with like the blv records and and they're doing they got the warehouse built out and they're they're throwing events for the youth man like that's what that shit's about dog like that shit is so cool to me because they're coming from such a small city and dude they're just exposing talent out the ass man like Corey pigeon dude like all these names man like all these cats are so talented and they've got a real good group and uh I'm cool with all of them, dude, and 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 those guys have give, have gotten me opportunities, you know, in the game and stuff. So Harrisburg definitely holds a very very close place in my heart. Shout out uh, Springgate Winery, bro. That place is lit. <laughs> that is a lituation, yeah. <laughs> dude, Springgate is dope. They got like the frozen, the frozen wines, dude. Oh man, that that's that's so sick, man. I I love Harrisburg. Yeah, dude, and like, and like that city, it's so interesting because, like I said, it's so small. But like, dude, there is just so much talent that y'all have out there. Like, it's it's unbelievable, and I'm so glad that it's finally getting like put in a bottle and just exposed to the world. And you know, those kids are really they're they're really making waves, man. So sh shout out to them, man. BLV, all them, all them cats, man. we could at least talk about like a few of the positive things that like small positive things in comparison, of course. But you no, know, one of the things that I think was eye opening about quarantine is people got to be inside and just think, you know what I'm saying? And people were doing a lot of cool shit. A lot of art came out of quarantine, a lot of clothing brands, a lot of, you know, these, these quarantine babies, well, if you will, these ideas that, that we bred and this project, dude, this was, you know, a, a product of that as well. It was it was me sitting in my room for a month and a half, uh, you know, thinking and and you know, and and taking in things and taking in media and the Sopranos. Uh, this is the uh, one of the predominant areas where they filmed uh, a lot in this town. A lot, um, a lot of the intro was filmed around here. And uh, it's just one of the greatest shows. Um, fun fact, it's actually the first show ever where the protagonist was a murderer. So think about that. Think about that. Of course, dude, you have your Dexters and whatnots and your Breaking Bads. But none of them would be without, without the Soprano. The Bada Bing is close to here too, dude. just do you man like and that's that's overplayed and it's corny but it's 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 facts man just do whatever the hell you want to do here's my gram account uh this is my website um this is my twitter 
<laughs> is that too much? All right, I'll give you those three. Yeah, yeah. Those those, those are the three the three main things you can find me on.